Let's look at another example of calculating T, N, and B. So in this case, um, we can calculate T as r prime of t over the length of r prime, so the velocity divided by the speed, and r prime is going to be 1. See, the derivative of, uh, of cosine is negative sine, so we get minus sine t over cosine t, that would be minus tangent t, and then the derivative here is 0. So we'll take that and we'll divide it by its length which is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus tangent squared. And that will give us um, 1 and negative tan t and 0 divided by 1 plus tangent squared is the secant squared. So we have the square root of the secant squared. That would be the absolute value of the secant. But in this range, with t between minus pi halves and pi halves, and probably we better not allow this since it doesn't make sense in the original problem. Um, between minus pi halves and pi halves, the secant is positive. So we don't, the absolute value of secant will be the secant. So with just a little bit more simplification, <coughs> one, o, 1 divided by the secant would be the cosine of t. And the tangent is uh, sine over cosine. So if you divide by the secant, that's the same as multiplying by the multiplying by um, the cosine, and the tangent times the cosine is minus sine, so we'll get minus sine t, and then we'll get zero. So we get this unit vector for t prime. Now, we can calculate the unit normal by taking t prime divided by the length of t prime. So t prime divided by the length of t prime would be minus sine t, derivative of minus sine t is minus cosine t, and the derivative of 0 is still 0. And the length here is the square root of sine squared t plus cosine squared t, which is uh, 1. Right? So we actually get minus sine t minus cos t and 0. OK, so that finds the unit normal. And now the binormal would be t cross n. So we can put these into um, a determinant just to calculate the cross product. So t is cos t minus sine t and 0. And um, n is minus sine t minus cos t and 0. <clears throat> and so we get, we get, let's see, the i component would be 0 minus 0, and the j component would be uh, 0 minus 0, so that's going to be 0, and then the k component is going to be minus cosine squared minus sine squared. So minus cosine squared t minus sine squared t, and of course that's negative 1, so our binormal is 0, 0, and negative 1. So we've got our unit tangent, we've got our unit normal, and our binormal. Now a good check whenever you do a cross product would be to make sure that the result of the cross product is perpendicular to the two original vectors, which you can see because if you dot b with n, you get 0 and 0 and 0. So it's, ortho it's perpendicular to, to n, and then if you dot it with t, you get 0 and 0 and 0. So yes, b is orthogonal to both. Now I'd like to look at this problem again. Um, in this, this time, let's look at the curve. If you notice, the z in this case is a constant, which means you're not in the xy plane, but you're in a plane parallel to the xy plane. So if we think about this curve, we have this curve, and um, we're up here in the plane where the z value is always 3. So actually, we really just have a curve in a plane parallel to the xy plane. Um, the next thing that we can do um, would be to, to look at now t. Um, because this is a plane curve, um, t, let's see, that turned out to be 1 and minus tan t and 0 all over the secant. 
of t, since 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared, and the square root of the secant squared is the absolute value of the secant, and in this range, if we, allow, if we leave those bad points off, then, um, then the secant is positive, so we don't need the absolute value. So we ended up with 1 over the secant, that's the cosine t, and minus sine t, and 0. And the fact that one of these components is zero makes it really easy to find, since this is a curve in the plane, it makes it really easy to find our normal. Because remember, if you have any vector in the plane, like if you have the vector AB, you can easily create two perpendicular vectors. So for a vector in the plane, one perpendicular vector would be to switch the components and make the first one negative. And that would give you uh, negative AB plus AB makes zero. Or another way to make a perpendicular vector would be to switch the two components and make the second one negative. In this case, that would give you AB minus AB, and that would be zero. So we have two possibilities for the normal. If you have a vector in two dimensions, it's easy to find the two possibilities for the normal um, just by switching the two components and flipping one of them. So if we, if we think about our curve here, um, if we think about our curve, then knowing that the tangent is 1 minus tan t and 0, then our normal is 1, or, oh, let's see, that's not our tangent. Our tangent is um, cosine t minus sine t and 0. So our normal could be one of two possibilities. We could flip the two entries. It's essentially a vector in two dimensions, right? Because that component's zero. So we can see that from the curve, that the direction that you're curving in, you're turning in, must lie in the plane, since you never leave that plane. So maybe we could flip the two entries and change the sign in the first, or we could um, flip the two entries and change the sign on the second. So we get minus sine t and minus cosine t and 0. So one of these has to be the normal. We just have to spend some time figuring out which is which. And for that, it would help to look at um, our actual curve. So this curve, we said, was in a plane parallel to the xy plane because the z, z coordinate was always constant. Let's see what happens to this curve as time goes on. Well, as time goes on, x is increasing, right? So um, this is x, and x is, in, x is t, and, in this, and t is increasing. So our x coordinate is always going to be increasing. And let's see, what about the natural log of the cosine of t? In this range, cosine goes from being um, a positive number, right? So, so being uh, a number near zero, but positive, to being when t is zero, then the cosine is one, to being, um, to being um, just slightly positive again. So if we look at cos t in this range, cos t comes up and then goes down as a function of t. So now the natural log of that <coughs> is gonna look something like this, function of t. So the natural log of one is zero, and the natural log of numbers um, less than one is negative. So we're gonna have like a, a vertical asymptote here in this range. Okay, so that means that my, my x value is always increasing, but my y values are going to be um, very negative, and then they're gonna come up to zero, and then they're gonna be uh, negative again. And so. Well, actually, since x is t, then, then really my curve is y equals the natural log of the cosine of x. And that's what we've graphed right here. So we're going to see a curve like this. So we can see that our normal always needs to go in, because that's the direction as we go. Here's our tangent. And right? as we go along this curve, we found our tangent. And our normal always needs to go in. So we just have to decide which of these goes in. Um, and this, sine t, cosine t, if we have, say, a t that's greater than zero, so that we're, we're over here, then the sine will be positive and the cosine will be positive, and so we'll be going out. So this cannot be the normal, 
we just based on thinking about the curve and the direction that normal needs to point, so we knew it was one of these two choices, based on examining that direction we could see that this one was out because that wouldn't be in the direction you're turning. As we turn, T needs to be moving this way, right? It needs to be needs to be turning in the direction of this normal. So now we've picked our normal. Now, the binormal is actually really easy because it's in a plane of constant z. We know that the binormal has either got to be straight up out of the plane or straight down into the plane. So either 0, 0, 1 or 0, 0, negative 1 which one it should, it should be, we can determine from the right hand rule. If you take your right hand and you run your fingers this way and curl them towards the normal, your right hand is going to make your thumb down as you go down in that, so it, this must be, this can't be the right one, this has got to be the right one for B. So, Just from sort of geometric considerations, we're able to figure out what T, N, and B are. And this is sort of special for this particular curve, and the reason that we were able to do it is because we had one of one of the position um, one of the com position components constant, so it lie it lay in a plane that was parallel to one of the coordinate planes, and so really it was just a two-dimensional case.